Hello and welcome to Ruckasaurus Rex, the channel where we review all things dinosaur and other prehistoric animals. How are you guys doing out there? Hope you're doing great. You see what we got in front of us. If you've been following, you know that I said last go round that uh, we have uh, caught up with all of the uh, all of the models that came in at the tail end of, of uh, last year, and that we would uh, begin with uh, new 2024 product, uh, specifically from How Long Good. We have a pair of Ceratopsians on deck. Speaking of Ceratopsians, we do have a third Ceratopsian, which we're going to do first, and it's this one. And the reason we're doing this one is because this just came in. I've been trying to acquire this figure, and this is a figure, for quite some time uh, in my, uh, my effort, my endeavor to complete the Ceratopsian series of Beasts of the Mesozoic by Creative Beast Studio. And uh, I finally got one. Courtesy of Mr. David Silva, the uh, creator, the founder, everything you can imagine, designer of uh, the uh, the product uh, for that company. And um, yes, I, uh, I've fallen totally in love with uh, the figures from Beasts of the Mesozoic and uh, the Chasmosaurus here, Chasmosaurus Belly or Belli, uh, is the penultimate figure. That will lead to the completion of uh, my getting the entire Ceratopsian series. I just need Styracosaurus, the original Styracosaurus, the green one. And that's on the way too. That will arrive when I receive my Wave 3 Tyrannosaur series order. So it will be completed then. And uh, I am happy about that. I was definitely, um, shall we say, a bit pressed to uh, get Chasmosaurus because of the upcoming Wave 3 of the Tyrannosaur series. I like, if you've been following at all, when I've been doing the uh, the uh, Beast of the Mesozoic, the past uh, Tyrannosaur offerings, if there was a Ceratopsian that lived, that coexisted, I uh, paired them up in a segment in those reviews and I definitely wanted to do that with with Chasmosaurus. We've got Despletosaurus, Gorgosaurus, Albertosaurus on the way and uh, Chasmosaurus was uh, found in Alberta and uh, he is down to be matched up with one of those three. I believe I've got it matched up with Despletosaurus uh, but you can basically insert anything with the, uh, with, uh, the Daspy because that critter got around. He uh, was around. You, you could basically name any Ceratopsian, North American Ceratopsian that was uh, that existed at 75, 76 million years ago. Despletosaurus was there. But uh, we will talk about that when that figure comes in. Looking at this packaging, this is, uh, by the way, before I... Uh, before I uh, continue, let me just say that this is part of the Late to the Party series. So that's a continuation of that. And it will conclude when we get that Styracosaurus. So uh, there you have it. Anyway, now back to the matter at hand. You see the artwork there on our right. It's a sleeve, and you can see the figure within tied down nice. You can see out the back that there is a backdrop, which is standard with Beasts of the Mesozoic. Turning it around, you've got the logo on the side there with the uh, silhouette icon of a Triceratops. And then at the top, you have... The, on the sleeve, 19 points of articulation, realistic movement and detail, profile card included. This is number four, Beast of the Mesozoic Ceratopsian series. This is 118th scale. Then on the back, you have, that's what the card would look like on the uh, inside. And we will get a look at that card in a bit. Uh, and uh, it has a, uh, a little readout. Number four, Chasmosaurus belly or belli. Chasmosaurus means opening lizard. Location, I'm getting it of myself. Let's go with length. Length up to 4.8 meters or 15.7 feet long. So it was basically a mid-sized uh, Ceratopsian. 
Location, Dinosaur Park Formation, Alberta, Canada. Time period, late Cretaceous, 76.5 million years ago. Chasmosaurus belli was a chasmosaurine of average size. And, of course, that's who the uh, this uh, sector of uh, ceratopsians are named after. Chasmosaurus is the uh, the type specimen for that, type species, I should say. The meaning of its name, opening lizard, refers to the large openings or fenestras on its frill. These This species was originally named Monoclonius, and I remember that as a kid it was uh, referred to as Monoclonius. I do remember that. And then, of course, we have the on the back the Wave 1 checklist. I'm not going to take it off. I have to cut through the tape, apparently. But it has all of the uh, figures that are in Wave 1. So that's what you have there. On the other side, of course, there's just the window. And here we are at the front. And next thing we're going to do is get her open and check her out. Here's a look at that backdrop that was included in the packaging. It looks like a, uh, a forest with uh, like a, I want to say a swamp or a lake possibly but uh, looks very nice very lush very nice we also get that uh, that info card I still have it in the uh, the wrapping and uh, on the back of the card it'll have that same information that I read off but I do have at the rear of this is uh, the instruction uh, uh, paper that shows how to uh, apply the uh, tail which is detached uh, in packaging by utilizing hot water or uh, some form of heat hair blow dry or whatever so that's uh, what you got there and you, like I said you still have some more of that artwork that we saw on the uh, the sleeve of the packaging now taking a look at our Chasmosaurus out of packaging and on our rotating platter you can see the nice, uh, vibrant color. Speaking of that coloration, as always with Creative Beast Studio, Beast of the Mesozoic figures, their figures are based, the colors of their figures, I should say, are based on living birds or reptiles slash amphibians. In this case, the green mantella frog is what our Chasmosaurus uh, color palette has been inspired by. And uh, looks very nice, very nice indeed. We've got uh, very uh, nice. Uh, I mean, the uh, the 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 green is just popping, and then you've got uh, some nice browns, different uh, shades of brown, and uh, yeah, it's uh, very very nice. We will get a uh, closer look at the uh, Chasmosaurus, uh, and we're going to do that right now. Taking a measurement of our Chasmosaurus from beak to tail tip, we're talking about 10 inches. So at the 118th scale, if you do your estimations, your calculations, this puts this figure right there at 15 feet. So you're right there in that 118th scale. So this definitely matches up very nicely. Looking at the figure itself getting a closer look we take a look at the uh, the skull if any of you guys recall when I was going through it with the uh, other uh, figures from this line I was just swooning over all of the skulls from the ceratopsians and uh, that's not going to stop now very very nice we've got uh, if you look at that nasal horn it uh, it protrudes going slightly forward, slightly forward, kind of sort of makes it a little bit uh, uh, easier to uh, impale a uh, an enemy, uh, a predator. You know, when it's uh, pointing like that, you can really get it in just going forward. No, no need to try to hook up. As far as the colors are concerned, there's that green looking at it forward and look at the pattern there at the uh, on the frill. And uh, the uh, the name Open Lizard is uh, due to what we got here. They're really, even though it's painted and there's skin over it, the frill was basically, there was nothing going on there, hollowed out at that point. You could, if there was no skin, you could see right through it. And uh, so you got that nice pattern. You've got uh, more of the, the spikes there on the, uh, the edges of that uh, frill, as well as going down the side. 
Very nice. The, the colors, obviously you've got that lime green. Then you've got this nice dark brown along the, we'll call it the face. The eye is uh, basically painted. It's a black pupil and there is a lighter color back there. It's not necessarily white, but um, it is present. Then when you get down to the nasal area, you do have that uh, still, you have the striping of the dark brown. Then it goes down to like a caramel type brown. You've got blue and uh, like a sky blue and white and there's a wash. So the uh, scalation pops out. The beak itself has got like a bony grayish color as well as that uh, nasal horn. Very nice. The uh, mouth, which is articulated. You see it can go down. That's a little bit too far. That's definitely too far, but looking in the mouth, I'm going to keep it there so we can at least get a better view of what's going on in the mouth. And uh, you see it's painted it kind of like a, I don't know what color to call it, but uh, it uh, you see it right there. still has a nice wet look to it. I'm going to put the mouth back around where it needs to go. That's really about as far as you should articulate that lower jaw. You got there the side spikes on either side there. They're uh, colored um, that uh, sky blue and white with some of that caramel that's in there. The rear of the frill is painted, so we've got that going on. That's looking very nice, too. Then you got the neck, all those nice colors, browns, the sky blues, everything is popping. Then we have a different color of uh, brown here. Uh, it's not uh, caramel colored. It's uh, definitely lighter than the rest. And it carries over to the uh, hind limb, and then you've got the wash there. Very nice, very nice. More of the uh, lime green on that forelimb, around the, the, the back of the uh, forelimb. The front of it has got that uh, like grayish white going on. And uh, speaking of that, that's what you see there on the, uh, the underbelly. And it's got a slight wash, so the scales actually pop out. The uh, claws or, or uh, nails hooves, whatever you want to call it. There are five toes and there are three basically hooves, if you will, um, on the uh, forelimbs and they're painted like a gray. The rear, three uh, or rather four toes, I should say, and uh, they're all painted uh, that same gray. Going down uh, the tail, everything stays consistent and carries over with the uh, the, the greens and the uh, the browns and the whites. There is a wash when I turn up so you can see it up top that uh, there is a darker green going over the uh, the lime green there and that carries on down through the tail and uh, you have that same thing going on on the, uh, the other side. As far as that articulation, we already showed you the jaw. Unfortunately, the jaw will not close any more than that. So that's what you're getting. He's always going to have his mouth open. The head, you have articulation at the head. So the head actually moves independent of the neck. So that's cool. You can go left, right with that. Slightly up and down. In conjunction with the neck, you can uh, get some more movement that way as well. The neck can move slightly up and slightly down. I could probably get more after I, I work with it some. You can get some swivel going like that, so you can actually get some type of uh, expression. The torso, you've got, you've got torso articulation right there. Sorry, I got in my own light. And you can move it up and down. I could probably get some more once again once I work with it. This is brand new out the box. I had to get it in quickly because uh, uh, the Despoidosaurus is coming. The forelimb. You got rotation. You can go swivel it forward, back and front. It does, it does flail out, as you could see, right there. It does flail out. You have articulation there at that knee. It'll bend there, and it'll also swivel. And you've got articulation there at the ankle, so up, down, and it will, it will pivot, and it will swivel as well. Rear leg, you've got rotation. You've got articulation at the knee, as you can see there. It also swivels. You've got articulation there at the ankle, the, the, uh, the upper ankle, if you will. And uh, you have articulation there at the foot. So it goes up, down, and you can swivel that as well. 
and you do have articulation with the tail left, right, up, down, and you could even spin it if you want it to. So that is what, see if I can get him to at least look decent before I fade him off. That is the articulation scheme on our Chasmosaurus by Beast of the Mesozoic. As for comparisons, we're only going to do one now because we will be returning with Chasmosaurus with one of the three Tyrannosaurs that I mentioned when they finally come in. And uh, yeah, we will see Chasmosaur Chasmosaurus again. So uh, we're going to compare it with another Chasmosaurine Ceratopsian, that being Pentaceratops. And to show you how large a Chasmosaurus would be compared to a human being, we break out our 118th scale, Robert Muldoon. And to wrap up this Ceratopsian series by Beast of the Mesozoic, late to the party review, wave one, the return of Beast of the Mesozoic reviews to this channel, we have the Chasmosaurus and uh, long-awaited Chasmosaurus, with a long time to get it, and uh, mad props to Beasts of the Mesozoic for um, helping me get this, and uh, especially right in time, right in time for the Wave 3 of the Tyrannosaur series of the same company, BOTM. The colors pop on this a particular figure based off of the green mantella frog and uh or inspired is a better a better description because it's not like it looks just like you know the same colors as the frog but uh that's where the inspiration was taken you've got the uh the points of articulation that just adds we have the return of the fun factor as you can see here from this particular closing shot pose that I have our chasmosaur uh, engaged in. Gotta love it. Um, yeah, I'm very excited to add this to my Beast of the Mesozoic collection. Finally, one more to go. One more to go, Styracosaurus, and that will be coming very soon. In fact, it'll come the same time as the Wave 3 Tyrannosaur series comes. Uh, and I am here for that. Anyway, what do you guys think? This is uh, definitely late to the party. This uh, figure came out back in uh, 2020, and I finally uh, got to it right now. One step closer to the completion of that series. Yes, indeed. So in the, in, uh, in the comments below, let me know what you guys think of uh, this uh, figure. And uh, what do you think of the, uh, the channel? Anything you want to talk about down there in the uh, comment section below? Give a thumbs up down there, uh, like, like I said, or, or, you know, thumbs down, whatever. Do something down there. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. If you want to be notified when I upload another video, there's a bell down there to hit and you will be so notified. And, uh, yeah, um, I am loving this figure, but I love all of the Beast of Mesozoic figures. I am hooked uh, I am truly late to the party as uh, I knew about these uh, figures when they first came out and I just wasn't sold because of, um, you know, I looked at the articulation and I couldn't really unsee it at the time until I took a deep dive. And now here I am. Anyway, I'm not about to get my second wind on that. You guys, thank you for rocking with me. Until next time, you take care. Peace.